welcome back to the large format 4x5 camera build. This is part four. What I'm working on today is the rear frame and the front frame. Front frame holds the lens and the rear frame holds the film. This is a new drill press for me, so I uh, made the mistake here of running this hole saw at way too many RPMs. That's why it's creating smoke here. <laughs> What I'm doing here is squaring up the front lens board. This is just aluminum and I'm using an old plane just in case it scratched it, which it didn't seem to work really well. What I'm doing here is gluing up the front lens frame and I included the lens board just to make sure during glue up I didn't make any goofs. Thank you. 
So I needed to cut a slot in the brass and it's hard to do on a drill press. So I made a little holder just to help keep it stable. And even this was not a perfect solution. I'm thinking of getting a cross slide vise to help me hold the brass uh, more immobile while I'm drilling it and milling it. So this is an end mill and it's kind of tricky to use on a drill press. Everything has to be very well locked down because it wants to walk all over the place. Once it gets seated, it's okay, but it's really built for milling machines, not drill presses. set here or I should say just a tap and drill so what I need is the 632 that's what these little guys are these are 632s and what my plan is is to tap or drill a hole in this plate and then tap into the, the uh, side brace all right, so I carefully scribed a line with my caliper and you can see the cross crosses there. And then I center punched where I want these two holes to go. So the one on the left is gonna be the pivot and the one on the right is gonna be the brace pivot. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill these. A little bit of raised grain, but so the problem with this plan is that as you use it, it's just going to loosen up. So I'm going to have to figure out some sort of pivot that'll work here. And, uh, but for now, I want to be able to take it all apart later. I mean, just look at this, just even, even one move. I could use some thread lock, but it's going to defeat the purpose here. Here's my tap and here's my pilot. I have never cut threads before, so this will be fun. What I'm gonna do is cut it in this brace here right where that that uh, set hole is, and that's gonna I'm gonna thread tap some threads for the uh, sliding brace. like a sharp bit. The uh, drill press just so it's nice and straight. Let's see if this works. Again, I have never done this before. Don't know how to film it. Okay. Just give it something to play with. Okay. Just 
go in and then out. so soft. I don't know if that did anything. Let's try it. So I uh, chased the thread for a minute just to see if I could make it better. And uh, it is. It goes right in and out. Nice and tight. Nice. Okay, now that, that thread is cut, let's see if that works. Nice, another successful thread. So one problem here, is that even when I get this up, the thread protrusion is gonna keep, keep this from closing. So, I've got a bigger a spacer out here or something that's gonna allow this to clear the thread as it's coming down. Could make a little notch in the side of the frame here, that's one idea. Um, what I wanted to get done today. I'm just grinding a screw into the bottom of this thing. All right. So as I get closer to completion, I have to be careful my workspace because <laughs> I'm going to start, I'm gonna start uh, regressing in this project as I scratch things up. I've got washers and gra brass grit over everything. So I need to get a um, pad just to start setting this on so I don't scratch it. But. Uh, this is the idea. So rear standard. I've got to work on this guy, but it does actually work. Oh, this is backwards. Oops. So here's the focusing rack. It's really tight though. Got to make some adjustments. Uh, so yeah, this looks pretty good. Yeah. 